Good afternoon, class. Welcome to lab today. And if you're a master naturalist class, I uh, wish you were here. We were supposed to be here today. I am at Flat Creek Heritage Preserve, more popularly known as 40 Acre Rock, because of this granite surface that I'm sitting upon. Uh, about 14 acres of this is exposed, and it travels many more square miles underneath the Earth's surface. Uh, this rock was formed about 300 million years ago during the collision of continents that formed the supercontinent Pangaea. Uh, this was magma. This was, this was molten liquid earth at that time. It slowly crystallized and cooled off. It was underneath the soil and was exposed throughout the process of erosion over many years. And where it's become flat enough to capture some soil or even concave enough to capture some water and also soil, life has found interesting ways to exist. And so for me, that's one of the most spectacular places um, or pieces of this adventure is that I get to travel back in time just a little bit uh, because many of these adaptations are in fact adaptations to something that start, started many hundreds of millions of years ago. So it's quite a treat and a wonderful place to explore the natural world. What you got in there, Alex? You got him? Bring him out nice and slow. Right about there. Whoa, that's close enough, I think. Back off just, there you go. Nice. So two little white stripes on the side, huh? And all the, oh, it's a spike tail, it looks like. So this guy lays eggs, shooting that tail straight down into water, much like a spike. That's why he's called that. Can you turn him so we can see his little green eyes? There you go. Hold him in front of your white net. Nice. Good job, Alex. How's it feel to have that in your hand? I don't know. The wings are like scaly, it feels like. Yeah? There we go. There's a good picture. All right, buddy. You want to let him go? Yeah. Put him on your nose. No! Come on. Like me. Come on. I'll put him on my feet. There you go. Yeah. So this is a zebra swallowtail. These guys are all over the place today. And um, hold them as still as you can, bud. So they're so-called because their stripes are black and white, much like a zebra. They feed as larvae, as caterpillars, on pawpaw trees, which are abundant down the hill here. Um, so these guys have just crawled out of their chrysalis, and they're up on the wing today looking for girlfriends and boyfriends. Zebra swallowtail. Making our way out on the rock and here is our first flower of the day. A nice little flat of woolly ragwort. It's called woolly ragwort because the leaves are especially woolly or pubescent as botanists like to say. Um, and they also stand very erect. Um, they're in the full sun so they're actually trying to reduce their surface area and exposure so they don't dry out too much. So they stand up straight in order to do that. And the woolly uh, nature of their leaves sort of helps slow down transpiration too. It gives them a little blanket just upon the surface over the little um, holes that typically let go of the moisture. And so um, this makes them well adapted to living in this bright sunshine. Okay, so dancing there in the sunlight is trout lily. These are always fun, they're early bloomers. And um, so-called because the leaf to somebody look like a trout, and then lily because they're in the lily family. So they, they come up very quickly and then the entire plant's gonna disappear. It's gonna go from flower to fruit in short order. And uh, for the most part, disappear and go dormant for the rest of the a couple of little white flowers, these ones that are kind of dancing at a distance from one another um, in singles are uh, one flowered sandwort and they're just in the bare um, pieces of soil that are existing from the rock breaking down and then we move up where there's a little more soil development and you got a beautiful little stand of smooth sandwort. So two different species that are in the same genus. So when you look across the surface of the rock, you see some of the smaller pools where the soil has not yet developed into anything substantial, and they're filled with bright red colors, and this is mostly elf or pine. It's a little plant there, and it's a succulent. It has big old juicy leaves that store water when these pools dry out, and then it's accompanied in this case by the one-flowered sandwort, 
which is the flower. Um, the L4 pine has yet to bloom, but it'll be bursting out here in just a few. So we're on the back side of the rock now, just down the hill, and there are wild azaleas blooming all over this hillside. Fantastic display. A lot of people don't think about the fact that we have native azaleas, but we do. We have a number of different species, and they do quite well here at 40 Acre Rock. So we're looking at a little Carolina pink here in bloom on the hillside, just off to the side of the waterfall, and then move around to the left. My wife's good eye found this beautiful little creature. This is probably one of the female five-line skinks. Um, maybe uh, a female broadhead or um, there's three different ones that are very closely related and you kind of got to look at the scales under the lip and all this other fancy stuff. But that is a skink, which is a type of lizard. It's really shiny. A lot of people confuse it for a salamander, but it's shiny because it has smooth scales, not because it's wet or because it's an amphibian. If you just saw he winked at you, that means you're dealing with a reptile and a uh, little ear canal just behind the head there. Beautiful little species catching some sun. Oh my goodness, we got quite a sight to see. All right, where are they? Oh, there, I think we are looking at a family of dung beetles, wow. Big ball of poop there, and if you look kind of to, um, I don't know the poop right offhand, it's right there. but if you look at this guy, just to the right, he's rolling a, a pile of dung. Other males probably in there starting to roll their little piles of dung. Flies competing for the resource, but um, if these males can get a little roll of dung away from um, this original deposit, um, they can find a girlfriend, she will uh, have interactions with them, and then she'll lay an egg in the middle of that ball of dung. This will be planted underneath the ground, so to speak, and uh, a little egg will hatch out, larva will eat the poo, and then hatch out as an adult dung beetle later on in the year. What a treat to run into this. So one neat thing is that these dung beetles are able to roll this ball of poo in a direct line away from the original deposit. And that's the quickest way to get it away uh, from all the competition because if another male comes, they'll, they'll sometimes steal the ball, the hard work that the one male has done. So if you go in a curvier line, you're kind of in trouble. A straight line is the best way to get some distance between you and the original deposit. Now doing all this, they're standing on their head, facing down, and pushing with their hind legs. And sometimes they're doing this in the evening as well. And scientists have figured out that they're somehow able to orient and keep a straight line based on the sun and sometimes the stars. If you don't think this is impressive, then why don't you roll your dung into a ball and then roll it down the street in a straight line with your feet, all the while walking on your hands. That's a fight there between two males. Over a dung ball. Kind of reminds me of my kids fighting over stuff that really doesn't seem important, but to these beetles it is. Pretty fantastic. Little beetle larva here. Wow. Looking like uh, one of the maybe uh, glowworm larva, perhaps. Okay, so we're at a different rock formation this afternoon, different from the one above that was the granite rock face. And this one is called a diabase dike. So the rock is called diabase, and it's in the formation of a dike, much like you would use to hold back water, for example, during a flood. Um, and it originated when the continents separated. So not when they collided, but when they separated, the Earth's crust uh, thinned in various places and magma welled up from beneath and uh, formed in these weak spots in a dike-like formation, slowly cooled off 
and uh, turned into an igneous rock, uh, a nice solid rock here that happens to have really unique properties and minerals inside it that um, leach into the soil and provide a really nutritious soil and thereby giving you uh, all kinds of fantastic plants that live uh, just down slope of this geologic formation. All right, so we're, well, so if you'll just peel that back so we can, can we soft, that? just so we can see the flower. This one? Either one of them, there we go. Maybe the one closest, oh, look at there. All right, can you hold it steady? Now don't pull it. There we go, so there's the flower of nodding trillium. Fantastic little flower that only grows in really nutritious soils. And uh, trillium, because every flower part, including the leaves, are in threes, so try for trillium. And uh, good to see this guy out in bloom. I've noticed this plant for probably the past 10 years. Some trilliums are thought to be able to persist for nearly a century. And this one's been alone for quite some time. This exact same place. Yeah, this exact same place. Good job. All right, so we are looking at Jack in the Pulpit here. So these three leaflets popping up, and just below that you see a little spathe. Might remind you of a common house plant, but um, that below there is actually a flower. So if you look in there, you'll actually find flower parts. Um, typically, if you see two leaves on the individual, you've got a female flower. Otherwise, you probably have a male flower. Females need to acquire a little more food in order to make berries in the late summer and fall. But this is a plant that's common to our floodplains whenever you find that and the accompanying nutritious soils. These are a good set of tracks here leading up from the water. So that gives you a clue and big long toes and claws. This is, yeah, this is likely the American beaver. Okay, so my family's about to leave me, so it is time to wrap things up. But I uh, hope you had a nice day here at 40 Acre Rock. Uh, this is your land, so hopefully you'll take the opportunity to visit soon. And when you do, I hope you'll be thankful that we have such great public lands in our state and different agencies such as the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources to make sure they stay beautiful and pristine. Almost forgot. Gang sign.